So a couple of weeks ago, I had a little dialogue or monologue. Was it a monologue or a dialogue? Well, two monologues don't make a dialogue, but I'm gonna try to discuss this issue and resolve it once and for all. This is zirconium, it's a metal. And this is zirconia or zirconium dioxide, which is a ceramic, okay? It's not a metal. So these are ceramics, they are not metallic. They have no metallic properties. Metals have completely different properties. They are good conductors. They are generally heavier. They have electromagnetic properties and they have free electrons. So I'm not gonna discuss the metallurgical physics uh, behind these metals, but we have to start distinguishing between metal-free implants and metal implants. So titanium is a metal, right? So what is titanium dioxide? We hear about titanium dioxide being a very white powder it's uh, technically a ceramic too. It also releases titanium ions and you find a high concentration of titanium ions in the bone surrounding an implant. Whereas around ceramic implants, you have absolutely no reactivity. Ceramic zirconia or zirconium dioxide has no reactivity. It is so unreactive and so inert that it is also used around nuclear reactors as an insulator. So to summarize, this is a metal, this is a non-metal. Which one do you prefer in your bone? Do you prefer a metal or do you prefer a non-metal? Zirconium metal versus zirconia, which is short for zirconium dioxide. Alumina is short for aluminum dioxide or aluminum oxide. Alumina is not a metal. Titanium dioxide is not a metal. These are ceramics. They have a very complicated manufacturing method and they are metal free, very durable. Yes, ceramic implants have broken in the past because they were not made out of zirconia. And yes, today they break, but only if they're abused and they're not placed according to their ind indications, their rate of survival is at least as good as titanium. We are professionals and we have been through uh, higher education. We should be able to distinguish between metals and non-metals. I do not have to lay out all the uh, physical properties of ceramics versus metals, but these are pure ceramics that are inserted in human bone. And these are metals, including titanium, which are also inserted in bone. But I don't like that idea. I don't like metals in human tissue at all. Across the board, they are very biocompatible they are white, they are so friendly to tissue that the gums will actually grow on it. I mean, where do you see this around titanium implants? They have a much lower rate of perimplantitis, which is the inflammation and bone loss associated with implants, mostly found around titanium implants. Now we, were misled for what has it been about 200 years that a mixture of mercury and silver and tin and copper amalgamated would be a good filling material they made us believe that that was a safe thing to do but of course now we know better but really it took 200 years for us to realize that mercury in a filling in the human body which is, a, which is not even a stable alloy, it's an amalgam. The definition of an amalgam does not mean it's an alloy. An alloy is very stable. 
An amalgam is just a mixture of metals in a very unstable mixture of phases that may release their constituents into their surroundings. But we're not here to talk about amalgam. I just brought this up because we just have to start thinking outside the little box because we have a responsibility towards our patients. As the Hippocratic Oath states, first, do no harm. Luckily for us, there are so many dentists and oral surgeons around the world that are adopting metal-free implants, and that is mainly because of the consumer demand for them. I mean, people are educated. They go online and they know the difference between metal and non-metal, and uh, they kind of sense that there is something not right in putting a metal in your bone. I mean, despite the fact that there are millions of these implants, well, not this really, this is just a, a screw, but it's the same principle because it's a metal and uh, it, does, it just doesn't make sense to put an implant made out of metal where we have really much more biocompatible options. I think they are an excellent alternative for metal implants. And now with their two-piece systems, their bone level systems and screw retained um, versions, tissue level, I mean, you name it, they are so versatile that there is no reason to claim that titanium implants are a lot more advantageous. So titanium is a metal. Titanium dioxide is a ceramic. Zirconium is a metal. Zirconium dioxide is a ceramic. What is sodium? Sodium is a metal. It's a very highly reactive metal. And what do you think this is? Sodium chloride. Do we eat metal every day? No, that's salt. So how come salt is not a metal, but zirconia, as many people question, is another metal? What is that? Iron. And what is that? That is rust. Or how about hemoglobin? So do we have iron in metallic form circulating in our blood? That's an iron compound, isn't it? I want to thank my viewers for uh, watching this video. I hope I clarified uh, the difference between metals and non-metals. Follow my Instagram page where I have a wealth of short videos on uh, little tips and pearls for how to place these implants and how wonderful they are.